Assalamu alaikum and hi viewers this is Sajad Hussain and you are watching my youtube channel welcome to this next episode on the rape of the log by Alexander Pope viewers today's lecture is very important because I am going to discuss with you some of the questions that have been frequently asked in the university exams and uh, I will discuss with you essay type questions and by the end I would also discuss 10 short answer questions that are very much relevant to the exam. The first detailed question or the essay type question that I have to discuss with you today is the rape of the law as a social satire. In order to discuss this as a social satire, we need to understand that satire is a type of humor and every satirist at heart is a moralist and every satirist at heart is a realist and every satirist tries his best to present those weaknesses and follies and shortcomings that he sees around him in society and his purpose is to reform people his purpose is to improve people his purpose is to show a mirror to the people so, so that they can identify themselves and by identifying themselves they should improve themselves and Pope is a master satirist in fact his age is called age of satire and Alexander Pope along with Jonathan Swift and some important men of letters of the age constituted a club by the name Martinus Scribblerus Club and the purpose of this club was to satirize the weaknesses and shortcomings and follies and foibles and absurdities shown by the people and uh, Alexander Poe undertook this responsibility by writing poetry and by writing satires through poetry while uh, Jonathan Swift used prose as a medium to write satires. Now there is a social, the, the poem is a social satire and we see numerous instances, numerous examples. We find out that this satire is limited to and is restricted to a particular section of society, a particular strata of society and higher class or aristocratic class of society has been satirized and has been laughed at. Belinda and Lord Peter and Clarissa and Sir Plume all these are the characters who represent aristocratic class and who have their weaknesses and who have their shortcomings. Men and bellies or gallants and bellies or bellies and booze they have nothing constructive they have nothing worthwhile to do in their life they while away their time in useless activities in purposeless activities women like Belinda are in the habit of uh, rising late and uh, they while away their time at Hampton Court by indulging themselves in different useless activities like playing game of cards, taking coffee, ogling and swearing. Similarly, young men while away their time in uh, the game of Omber and uh, they take snuff and uh, they chew tobacco they fight duels and uh, they are all the time ogling and swearing and they are all the time flirting with ladies and this is how instead of doing something that should add to the glory of their country and that should earn them a good reputation these young men are just wasting their life in frivolous activities uh, there is an example 
of Lord Peter, the manner in which he builds that altar of love is quite absurd, is quite preposterous, is quite foolish. And uh, visiting different places in coaches, watching theatricals and uh, indulging themselves in petty things and throwing balls and parties is uh, frequently done by bellies and gallants of this aristocratic society. We find out that there are certain things that are in fashion. Young men wear wigs and uh, they are they fight duels and uh, judiciary or jurymen have also been satirized. They pass their verdicts and they give their verdicts and they make decisions and judgments hurriedly because uh, they do not fulfill the requisites of uh, justice and uh, this is something that has been laughed at. So overall the poem is a social satire. However, if we compare it with uh, the satire that is there in uh, Chaucer's prologue, we come to know that uh, there is a huge difference. Chaucer's uh, prologue represents a cross section of society and uh, almost every segment of society and every section of society and people belonging to all fields of life have been uh, laughed at and have been satirized because of the weaknesses and shortcomings that they have. But in this point, we see that only aristocratic ladies and uh, gentlemen have been satirized and have been mocked at. Moving on to the next question, it is uh, Belinda's character. Belinda is the central character and she is the protagonist and she is the main character. In fact, the entire poem revolves around his character and uh, she is an amalgam or she is a blend or she is a mix of good and bad things. For instance, she is uh, an embodiment of uh, beauty and she is a paragon of beauty and she has matchless beauty and she is resplendent in her beauty and uh, she has been called a goddess, a name murderer of millions and uh, her eyes can eclipse the day and when she smiles uh, the entire world is happy. So this is how uh, Alexander Pope has highlighted and pointed out the beauty and uh, magnificence of uh, Belinda and attraction that she has and uh, we come to know that uh, she is adventurous and she is daring and she is courageous. She uh, invites two young men to play a game of cards with her at Hampton Court and she defeats them in uh, this venture. However, when she loses her lock by the hands of Lord Peter, she is full of anguish and she is full of pain and uh, she starts crying at the peak of her voice and she asks and urges on her companions to fight with the companions of Lord Peter. This is what shows that she is daring and she is courageous as well. So these are the these can be the positive sides of Blinda's personality. However, Blinda is a highly duplicit and hypocritic sort of character. She is mainly concerned with her physical beauty, her external beauty, and she is least concerned to the beauty of her spirit. When she loses a lock, she is full of anguish and she is full of pain and she cries out that she would not have minded at all if the ravisher, if Lord Peter had deprived her of any other hair but these, but this lock. 
now in an implied way she tries to suggest that she would not have minded even if she had lost her chastity and her virginity but this loss of lock is uh, something that is uh, unbearable for her so belinda is a character who is uh, an a mix of good and bad characteristics and this is how you can uh, discuss her in detail the third detailed question that is important from examination point of view is to discuss the poem as a mock epic or mock heroic or heroic comic and uh, in the previous lecture i gave you the definition of a mock epic it is a poem in which all epic traditions are burlesque in which all epic traditions are presented at a smaller scale at a miniature level and if you look at the poem and if you review the poem you will see that the theme the characters the plot even the supernatural machinery everything that is there in the poem is presented at a miniature level and uh, we find out that small things have been made great and great things have been made small small things have been given extraordinary importance and extraordinary things have been just ignored for instance lock of blinda has been given such huge importance on the other hand virginity and chastity that is the most important thing as far as a woman is concerned is not paid that much attention losing of necklace and losing of heart has been placed side by side breaking diana's law and breaking china's jar have been placed side by side so this is how the society seems to be in a mess the society seems to be in a disorder and the society seems to be in a sort of uh, haphazardness and everything seems to be at sixes and sevens viewers i hope these uh, detailed answers are clear to you now let's move on hurriedly move on to the short answers that uh, are there and that can be asked in the university exams the first uh, question is uh, who is betty so betty is uh, the chambermaid she is an assistant to blinda and she helps her in ornamenting and uh, in her beautification and uh, the next question is what is the name of blinda's pet dog the name of blinda's pet dog is uh, shock the next question is how many supernatural spirits are mentioned by pope in the poem there are four supernatural spirits that are mentioned in the poem these are sylphs nymphs salamanders and gnomes however out of these four two actively participate in the poem and uh, these two are sylphs and gnomes now what are sylphs these are the spirits of air and who is ariel ariel is the representative is the leader of all these selves who are gnomes gnomes are the spirits of the earth and who is umbriel umbriel is the representative of all the gnomes who participates in the poem in fact she visits the queen of spleen she goes to that underworld and uh, brings from there uh, a few gifts and uh, there is a bag and there is a bottle and when these are uh, opened right over the head of blinda she becomes more infuriated and she becomes more violent so umbriel and ariel these are the supernatural spirits who actively participate in the poem what is omber omber is a game of cards blinda uh, plays this game of cards with two adventurous knights and defeats them and the next question is how does uh, lord peter build an altar of love he builds an altar of love with 12 french romances neatly gilt and uh, he places half a pair of gloves there and all trophies of his former love and belts and medals 
are also placed there then he lights fire with a love letter and gives out three amorous sighs and then he falls on his belly prostrate and uh, ardently begs to get that lock and retain it for the long time however uh, all the divine parts do not uh, grant him full prayer half of his prayer prayer is granted he is going to have that lock but he will not be able to retain it for a long time okay the next is who is clarissa clarissa is the woman who behaves in a hypocritic manner she is the one who provides scissors to lord peter so that he can clip the lock of linda but later on she comes up with a moralizing speech which shows her duplicity who is sir plum sir plum is an elderly figure he is an elderly person and blinda and other ladies request sir plum that he should mediate and play his part so that blinda's lock can be retrieved but sir plum behaves in an absurd manner and in a foolish manner and what is the consolation that the poet gives to blinda by the end of the poem the poet is of the view that the lock of blinda has drifted towards heaven and uh, the name of blinda is inscribed on that lock and that lock has become a part of the galaxy constellation so she has become eternal and she has become immortal viewers i hope all these questions that i have discussed with you are clear keep watching keep following those who haven't yet subscribed to my channel do subscribe it thank you very much allah hafiz